In this lesson, we're going to be talking about sound energy. And when we talk about sound, what we're really talking about is the transfer or the movement of energy by vibrations through different substances in the form of waves. So when we hear a sound, what we're really, what's really happening is we're getting vibrations that are going into our ears. They vibrate our eardrums, and it allows us to hear. Now, we said that they travel through substances. The substance that a sound wave travels through is called a medium. And sound has to have some type of medium to travel through, either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Depending on the medium and depending on the density of the medium, it can affect how we hear the sound. You might notice, you know, just sitting in the room talking to someone, they, their voice sounds different than, say, if you were underwater, if you're ever in the pool and maybe your mother's calling you or something like that. Her voice sounds distorted, it sounds different, because in that case, the sound's having to travel through a liquid. We talk about mediums that sound travels through, you know, it will travel through solids, it will travel through liquids, it will travel through gases, but what sound cannot travel through is a vacuum, which is essentially what we have in space. There's a little bit of matter there, but it's so spread out that vibrations can't travel through space well. So if you were, say, in outer space, if you were in a vacuum where there was no medium for sound to travel through, you actually wouldn't be able to hear anything, which is kind of interesting because all the things that are going on in space, you know, those sound waves don't really travel through the vacuum of space. So when we talk about how we hear sound, there's a few different properties of a sound wave that actually affect how it sounds. Obviously, you know, people's voices sound a little bit different. Uh, animals and other sounds that we hear, they don't sound alike because the sound waves have different properties. And one important property to understand is this idea of wavelength and frequency. So when we talk about wavelength, basically what we're talking about is the distance from the crest of a wave to the next crest, or the trough to the trough. And to illustrate these, I guess, features of the wave, here's a, here's a drawing I've made that just shows the crest being the high point, the peak of the wave, or the trough being the low point. So the distance from one crest to the next crest would be one wavelength. Also one trough to the next trough, that would also be one wavelength of the wave. Now, Frequency is related to wavelength because the longer the wave, I guess if each of these represents one vibration, then the longer the wave, the longer it would take to vibrate again. So it would be a lower frequency. Frequency is how often does the medium vibrate when the sound travels through it. So a longer wavelength would equal a lower frequency or a lower pitch sound. A higher wavelength or rather a shorter wavelength would represent a higher frequency or a high pitch sound. When we measure frequency, we measure it in a unit called hertz. And one hertz basically means one vibration of the medium per second. So each of those crest and troughs that you see on the wave is vibrating the medium once. So that means one wavelength basically would be traveling through one second, one vibration per second. Now humans can actually hear a range of sounds anywhere from around 20 hertz or 20 vibrations per second, all the way up to 20,000 hertz, or 20,000 vibrations per second. Of course, many animals can actually hear much higher frequencies than that. Dogs hear much higher frequency than humans, and lots of other animals. Some animals can hear lower frequencies, but the human range is between 20 and 20,000 hertz on average. The second important feature of the sound wave that affects how we hear the sound is something called amplitude. And amplitude is just the height of the wave. So again, when we look at our sound wave, it measures from the top of the crest downward to the bottom of the trough. So wavelength would be the horizontal measurement of the wave. Amplitude would be the vertical measurement of the wave. And amplitude of a sound determines how loud the sound is. So the greater the amplitude, the louder the sound would be. So as we think about sound waves, the really two key features to think about is this idea of wavelength or frequency. Of course, as we said, that affects the pitch of the sound and the amplitude of the wave that affects volume. It's also very important to remember this idea of a medium, some type of matter that the sound can travel through, be it a solid, liquid, or gas.